Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today I want to take the focus a bit more onto stateful widget. The last time we had created a stateless widget and I tried to explain you what are the benefits of that. And now I want to make it absolutely clear and want to create with you a stateless widget and a stateful widget to compare them together. So, and now let's get started. This project we can recall from the last time. And as you can see, I created a branch for it, stateless versus stateful. And as you can see, this is our stateless widget from the last time with hello YouTube in the app bar with a small text on the, in the center um, where I want to improve the styling a little bit that we, have, can, uh, take, that we can read it a bit better. So I call it size and 38. And now we can see the hello world. So now this is a stateless widget. So let's say, for example, we want to have a loading spinner inside till we decide that something has changed. So we will create up here a value called Boolean, um, which says that this is a, a true or false value. So for example, loading equals true. And you can see now immediately that this one getting yellowish and that calls that because it is called an mutable. That means all fields inside of a stateless widget have to be final. And what does it say is that if this is final, we can only change that by uh, destroying the whole um, application more or less. So. In that case, I want to do something like if um, loading, I make here a ternary operator. So if loading is true, we show this part, uh, we uh, return this part. And if it is false, we want to return a loading spinner. Um, circular um, progress indicator. So if I change now this to false, we see we have a loading spinner. And if I wrap that in a center, we have it even, uh, whoop, we should have it even in the center. So and if I do it true, we have it, uh, we have the hello world example. Perfect. But now what is if I have a service that I want to call and in the meantime, when I wait for something, I want to show the loading spinner. And first, if it's re ready, I want to hide it again. Hmm. All right, so we have somewhere a function that we want to call that changes this loading. So I don't have any possibility here in the loading to say something like loading equals false and go for it because it is a final variable, right? So whenever I create this, widget, I finished off that variable and I'm not able to change it anymore from that state on. And this means I can't change that value in the meantime. I only can change it if I really change uh, the whole widget. So this is state less. So the state is one set and stays that state. Now let's convert that to a state full widget. And as you can see, I press option enter on the state less here on top of here. And I press now convert to state full widget. And what happens now is we have now a widget created, which is still home screen, but it extends from state full widget. And a state full widget, as you can see inside of this class, there is no build function now. But what it does is it creates a state and it created me a whole new class, which extends from the state object. And now we created a state for this widget. And as you can see, the build function is now inside of the state. And this has a very beneficial thing for us because now we can say, okay, the state is not um, immutable. So we can really change something inside of here. And it will crash now um, because, uh, let's see, is not a subtype of stateless widget in typecast. Hmm. I have to reload most likely. Yep, here we go. So and as you can see, now here everything is fine. So and now I can do something inside of my build function, which is triggered multiple times whenever I do something. I can also say loading equals true. 
And now we change the state as soon as we build the whole widget here. And even if I initialize the loading with a false value, I change it immediately. That is just possible because it is a stateful widget. So what happens if I click a button somewhere inside of here? And let's say if the uh, loading is false, <clears throat> I'm showing off the circular progress uh, indicator. And now I wrap that, for example, in a, in a column. And inside of that column, I have also a flat button. Yep. And a flat button, I can click something. And whenever I click that flat button, I want to change the loading. Loading is the opposite of loading. So I toggle the loading in that case. So fair enough. And it needs something, a child, because it needs a text. And I call it, let's say, loading toggle. Voila. And now I'm just a bit, ah, yeah, because the I have to hot reload to uh, flutter hot restart because we want to get rid of the state that is currently inside of our state object. And as you can see now up here, we have now a centered circular spinner and a button underneath. And to make that a bit more beautiful, I also give it the main axis alignment center. With that, I push it in the center of the screen. And now I want to press it and it should toggle loading. And what we also will do is we print loading in that case, just to take a look if the value has really changed. So we're coming into the state, we set the value loading to false and we press now the button and take a look inside of what the loading is. So I press now, wow. Okay, the print is true, even though the state hasn't changed yet. So we still have the circular spinner, but what happened? Why does not the container is displayed with hello world? Well, in Flutter, there is a little function that we have to call whenever something changes the state. And if the state has changed, the build method will be re-triggered and will recreate the widget for us. So what we have to do now is we call that method. And whenever we press it, we call set state. And inside of set state, you can see it takes an, a parameter function. So a function as a parameter, if we jump into the, fun, uh, in the whole method, you can see it is a void callback. So we don't want um, a return statement in that case. And what I will do now is I will do this loading unequal loading inside of set state. And after that, I will print the loading again. So I save. And as you can see already, because the set state will, after the hot reload, the state will be uh, stay the same as before and re-triggers the build function, which creates now the correct one for us. But we want to clear again the state and as you can see, we have now the circular spinner and the loading button. That if I press it, set state will be called and hello world should appear. Yes, amazing, it worked. So as you can see, a state is much more complex and there is much more inside. And I really recommend you if you want to work more with Flutter to understand these two concepts of state less, which has no state or no changing state with a final um, prop with only final properties and a state full widget which has a state object which can change the properties inside of the class. All right, so now we know the differences a bit better from state less and state full widgets. And I really encourage you to try a bit around and maybe re replicate this example to just see how the differences work and also how you can work with the set state because it is a really important thing to learn and understand in Flutter. So that is everything to, for today. Thank you very much for joining me on that adventure again. On the right side, you find the uh, subscription button and on top of me, you find two um, videos that you know already. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. And thank you for watching me. See ya!